Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. <laughs> How do I sound? How's this microphone sound? Hi, Sydney. Thank you. Hi, Adina. Hi, Martina. How's it going? I don't think I adjusted the lighting over here. Let's see if I can make it a little bit brighter. That's a little better. Let's zoom it a little bit. No. Maybe right there. Hi, Ray, how's it going? <laughs> I missed you guys too. Sorry yesterday didn't work out. Let me see. Maybe right, Maybe right there. there. Oh, okay, the microphone does sound okay. Hi, Kathleen. Nice. My voice has not been calm lately. <laughs> Definitely had the anxiety lately. All right, so um, how did the, um, sounds fine, looks fine. Awesome, thank you. How did the intro, the one where I tell people how to speed it up, how'd that volume sound? And how did the um, jingle volume sound? Does all of these three volumes, like me the, and those two sound pretty good? Cause one of them disappeared and I had to like reload it and that meant the volume was way up so I had to adjust it back. Hi Hannah, hi Donna. You're unpacking, Kathleen. Uh, does it feel like you've been unpacking for a couple of years? Because that's how I feel. Packing and unpacking. It will be calm today. Hi, Beverly. Awesome. Good. I'm glad. Oh, there's someone down there. Yeah, so uh, it looks like there's going to, I'm going to have a neighbor and they redid their, that office next to me and they just forgot to turn the power back on yesterday. So most, nobody else noticed because there just isn't really many people here and downstairs it probably didn't affect them. So, hi Malin, we have power. It sounded the same, thank you Kathleen, thanks for telling me that. I recorded myself doing it but I just want to make sure it still sounds the same. So this little microphone is a little heavy. It's this little thing here. It's a little heavy. I probably won't get like all the, they have like little slick things um, that you can make it look like a little microphone, you know? But I probably won't bother with that. I'm not like on, you know, the news. Sorry, we couldn't handle that. Okay, good, Adina. Hi, Charlie, good evening. All right, so. We're making the um, Deer and Doe Bluette. This is a princess seam dress. I've actually had this for a while and it was a needle sharp subscription box. Hello, Hannah. Two Hannahs. Nice, you're making some linen bias tape. Ooh, you're a brave soul there. I like the ambition of linen bias tape. 
I use linen as bias tape, but it's definitely a little trickier to deal with sometimes, you know? Like sometimes, some linens are tighter than others and some of them just kind of like splay out. <laughs> I almost feel like linen would be better cross cut, but I'm, I just am so addicted to bias cut. I should just give it a try. My least favorite is um, double gauze. You'll see me chime in on people who do double gauze. I'm like, oh, you brave. All right, so this was actually a needle sharp box that I, I bought or maybe got uh, as part of subscription. I think I did all my subscription boxes. This is one I just bought. Because I really love, um, I have a passion for what I call day dresses. So usually that means it's hourglass shaped. I am very hourglass shaped, so that silhouette's always worked for me and I really love it. It's kind of like my, I've always just really loved that kind of 40s look, you know? And I like modern versions on that. And I've always been looking for like my favorite day dress. I really like the Hawthorne by Colette, but they don't really make that anymore. Um, and I have one, I, I wear it, it's one of my first streams. It's probably really painful to watch now, but I really like it. And it's in like this green fabric with uh, orange floral. Is it Hannah? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Did you pre-wash it? That might help. <laughs> um, let's see, so this definitely has that except it's princess seam and usually a day dress has a waist seam and it's darted, you know? But it has that, you know, it has that hourglass silhouette. I'm a little skeptical the sleeves will be very flattering on me because I've always had a really full bicep. Um, I've always had really strong arms. And so th this kind of cuts a little high for me. Hi, Terry, nice to see you. So, but I'm also not really that into sleeveless things as well. So I'm kind of, I'm still thinking about the sleeve and I could end up not making a decision today. So we'll see. But it would be pretty easy to sew this in. You don't have to ease cap sleeves in because you're not even going around the entire armhole. And the sleeve itself is like an oval. It's like an oval you fold it in half and then you just put it in between the notches. Pretty easy, right? So I'm just, I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do. Um, I also have what I'm gonna call a backward hip tilt. That's where I've rested. Did the sound change? Did I do something? I don't know. Is it, do you need it louder? I can make it louder, but it's almost all the way up. Just please chime in, tell me. So um, because of that, and if you look at the hashtag for this, Nello, Nancy, how's it going? Um, if you look at the hashtag for the bluette, there's lots of really cute ones. And if you look at even like the deer and doe pictures, which I actually, I actually have these pulled up on the computer. Let me, um, I'll show you what I am about to illustrate. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know what, I haven't set this camera up. Oh, you know what? I don't have a microphone on this. Let's see, I'm gonna see if I have a microphone on the scene. All right, there we go. See, I'm getting quick, huh? All right, so you see, look at this side view. You see this little scoop right here? And then um, you see it here. There's a little bow back there too. Here's the bow. I'm not sure I can zoom in on that. Here you go. I don't need to. It's cute. So because of that really significant back scoop, Awesome, thanks. Okay, cool, cool. You feel like it lowered? Sounds like it's okay. I feel like I'm trying to not talk as loud because I'm, it's so close to me, I'm afraid I'm gonna shout at you guys. <laughs> um, so because of that like really carved out back, which I love and I usually try and like make my garments do that because um, that is basically where my waist shaping is. It's, it's in my, my small of my back. But because of that, I also am a little worried that the hip wouldn't be full enough for my booty. Hi, Libby. How's it going? I, oh, I, very punny. <laughs> Have you been waiting to use that? I like it. 
<laughs> um, so I made one in um, the Swedish tracing paper. Where's the full screen? Here. There it is. So I made one in, the, in Swedish tracing paper. Remember, my form is a little bigger than me because I breathe and I'm soft and everything. So it's fine that it's very close fitting. I might, I might open it up. I'm, I'm making the size 46 and I'll tell you guys, the sizing is better than most if you get the PDF version. So the bust in inches goes up to um, 45 and 5 eighths. So a little over 45 and a half inches and the hip goes up. Oh wait, this is not the, I know the hip goes up higher than this. I checked, wait. I thought I had the PDF version, and I do have the PDF version, but the, um, sorry, I'm looking at the sizing online, because if you get the PDF version, it goes up to, oh, this does say 48 inch hip. What the heck? I was looking at something yesterday. I swear it went up to, oh, you know what? I was looking at the finished garment measurements. All right, well, I apologize. This actually doesn't have the best size spectrum. Oh, it seemed to change when I switched cameras. Is it, do you want it higher or lower? That's what I need to hear. Hi, Allison. Hi, Elena. It's probably new devices here. We are battling, yep. <laughs> they go down. I'm sorry, I didn't finish that to a 31 and a half inch bust, 33 and three quarters inch hip. So the, it goes up to 45 and five eighths bust, 48 inch hip. Um, and I just thought I'm making the size 46, which is usually a little bigger for me. Bluette. Wait. Oh, well, I don't speak French. Small hip, Adina, indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Okay, so anyway, I have cut one out in uh, Swedish tracing paper. I only did it to just below my hip for the length, and then I sewed it together because I wanted to fit it today. Yeah, Dina, and if you're looking at their stuff, you should look online for the sizing because the PDF patterns come in more sizes than their printed patterns. And now I'm feeling like that mellow low that I did the snarky sew along. I'm glad you all like that. You guys really like that sew along, by the way. I, that was really fun for me. That was like the easiest video to edit, which is great. Makes it even better. Um, I am just assuming that it comes in more sizes online. And they are expanding sizing and everything, but it does seem like they do it for PDF now. Yeah, right? You have the, oh, the, is it the aubergine you're talking about, Charlie? What's it called? Hi, Beverly. AU means blueberry. I love blueberries. All right, so anyway. So it's actually, it's funny. It's actually not carved out in my small on my back as much as I thought it would be. See that? And then what, where I always struggle with a lot of patterns is up here as well. So look at this, you see this, it's way above my shoulder. I think you can see th straight through practically. And I trimmed off of the 5 8 inch seam allowance along the neckline because I was like, this doesn't even go on here. So I needed to trim that off. So it's removed from up here. It does have 5 8 inch seams, which is pretty big, but it does allow me to like let it out if I want to in certain areas. And I might, I might in the back hip, it kind of just skims right there, which is, that's fine with me. I don't like things clinging in the front. So what I'm thinking is, I feel like this is what I would like to do. I would like to slash and remove, look at all that. And this is, you know, I started thinking this was like a certain pattern company that this happens with but it actually isn't that uncommon, and I'm not sure what this is. Like, I almost wanna slash and spread apart my back neck. 
Yeah, exactly, Sydney. I just looked at that. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you, too. Obapine. Obapine. I don't know which one that is, Charlie. I'm going to have to look it up. I've made the Myostotis. I've made the Saffron, the Azara, and the um, Melolo. I have made more deer and doe patterns than I realized. Blue, blue A. Is it blue A? Oh yeah, because the last letter is silent. You're right, it doesn't have a double T-E. Thank you, Allison, blue A. Blue A or blue A. <laughs> I've studied Spanish. I studied a couple years of French, but two years is just not enough, folks. It's just not enough. And Spanish, at least I worked with people that spoke Spanish. They helped me a lot. All right, so this is what I'm thinking right now. I like that. And remember, this is 5 8 inch away here. So, you know, it goes lower than this. It opens up the armhole. Well, it doesn't need opening up, but, you know, it looks really close right now. But it's not really. You know? Oh, pleats. Hi, Hannah. Three Hannahs today. Welcome. I'm making the Deer and Doe Bluette this week, which is a uh, princess-themed dress. Has a collar, collar stand, and button front placket. Has a little bow detail in the back, but I wish I actually might sew. I don't mind that. All right, here's the other thing I might do. <clears throat> is funnily, where I have all of my waist in my front, is I have this kind of thing going on here. So I think I might remove a little here, you know, and put it towards the back. Because I feel like I don't really need anything accentuating my front, <laughs> you know? So I'm just kind of letting this fall where it wants to. The Swedish tracing paper is is kind of like it's kind of like um, pel unfusible non-fusible pellon to sew with, you know. So it's kind of unforgiving. So you know when you when you make it when you make your prototypes or your twalls or your calicos, which I love that little word, um, in muslin, or you make your muslins in actual muslin, and you're like, oh, this fabric is it actually going to look good? Well, muslin looks better than Swedish tracing paper, but it's pretty affordable and you don't really feel any uh, conflicting <laughs> conflictions over throwing it away or something, you know. See, I could, ha I could use a little, I mean, it's like, it's not tight, but it's, it's there. I could remove this, but you know, I need to breathe, right? So that's what I'm thinking so far. I'm just thinking of removing this right here. That wouldn't affect my neckline or my collar or collar stand. Oh, there you go. Swedish tracing papers on sale at Waywax. See, and it comes on a little roll. I got mine at uh, Hearts Fabric. And they give you guys a discount. The, it's 10 so, so is the discount code. And you think you get, I want to say there were 10 yards on this roll. And it's about... Let's see. Oh, geez. I don't have a one over here. I'd say it's about 30 inches wide. You can iron it, but when I was ironing it, the um, armhole got caught on my table as I was pulling it to adjust it, and it just ripped across the shoulder. Because basically I've sewn it and it's perforated now, right? So, so I had to pin the shoulder back together. All right, so this is what I'm thinking so far. And I think I might, I don't know, I'm, it's not too tight, so I'm not sure if I should or not. It looks nice. Maybe I'll just add like a half inch back here. You know? But other than that, it's pretty good. And if you want to make sewing princess seems really hard, do it in print Swedish tracing paper because it's super unforgiving. <laughs> 
I know, Malin, right? Every time we talk about Swedish tracing paper, I think of you and I think it's kind of like how we call um, French seams and the French call them English seams. <laughs> There's no such thing as Swedish tracing paper in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's, you know, quick. You know, all I did was just cut out those pieces, cut it off at the, just below my hip, sew it up. Nothing fancy. I did press it because my Swedish tracing paper is getting uh, to the end of the roll and so it's getting really curly which is like aggravating. So oh yeah it comes um, is your name with love Stephanie Denise. That's cute. Uh, yeah it comes on a roll. Heart sent mine to me and it was in like a little plastic tube with a blue piece of paper in it. Oh, thanks, Malin. There you go, guys. The, yeah, right, Sydney? Who knows? Yeah, I've, I've seen that lately, which I, we never, I never called it that, but it's probably always been called that. Uh, yes, Debbie. I have several times made all my pattern adjustments on this. You, you got to treat it nicely, just like a piece of paper. Nice, Terry. Yeah, that's great that there's, it's on sale. All right, so let me make my adjustments here. I'm just going to remove this off the form. And then I'm so tempted to add some here, you know, because the ease, see what I did was I picked the 46. And that means that there is one and a half inches of ease in the bust and six and three quarters inches in the hip quite a bit. I don't see it on the form though, you know. I mean right here I do, right there. I don't see it through here and I do like it when I don't feel bound up through my shoulders and my bust. I'm kind of excited about making this change. I'm really glad I uh, cut this out to try it. All right. Let's Move things around here. Oh, and I didn't show you what was in my needle sharp box. <laughs> and to be honest, I haven't even opened this little bag here. <laughs> All right, so I also got, this isn't an ad or anything, but I know people are really uh, curious what you get in a needle sharp box. It's a subscription. This is fusible woven interfacing. I end, ended up buying some on my trip, which is kind of cool. Yeah, don't cut it up when you're cutting it out. And it, it, but you know what's nice is that it clings to your fabric, which is kind of nice. Um, and but it is easy to cut, and you won't know it. Like paper, you can kind of feel and hear paper. Whereas this sound, it doesn't sound make a sound. So let's see what's in this little bag. I mean, I kind of know because it says on the outside. I thought Broderie Anglaise was a, a lace. Oh, I haven't. Oh, I forgot about that company, French Poetry. Ooh. Look at this bias binding. Fonce. So she will put in here whatever... So you can make your choice. If you want to do the sleeveless view, you can do the sleeveless view. If you don't, you don't. Um, and so you get all the options. Thread, some cute little buttons, uh, a needle. You get everything you need. You even get candy, my favorite part. All right. And then she gives you a little, like, um, thing about your fabric, which is pretty detailed. Like, there's one for each of the woven interfacing, woven fusible interfacing, and this blue raspberry poplin, which is kind of ironic if it's called blue raspberry when we're making something that means blueberry. Oh, there's spandex in this fabric. Didn't even know that. And there's a little guide on shirting fabric. She just sends these in just to kind of give you extra instruction, make you feel more confident. And then you get the pattern and the instructions. 
Oh, and this probably came in there too. I always forget to use her labels. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Is it lower? The slow and just lowered, not your device. Oh, when I move, wait, when I switched cameras, it's not too low. That's so weird that, okay, let me, I just wanna look and see if they're at different levels on each one, which they shouldn't be, um, cause I can't really do that. Oh yeah, it is, okay. Does that sound closer? Yeah, you're right, the volumes were at different levels. Ray's like, see, I'm not crazy. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to cut apart my shoulders here so that it lays flat, that's all. It'll be a little easier to deal with. This is the one that has ripped, but then I taped it and pinned it together. All right. So then this is our back, and then the other adjustment I'm doing, wasn't there a pin here? No, is right here at this front. And I'm just gonna cut these apart so I have both my pattern pieces ready to go. All right. All right, so my pattern pieces on my front and the center back. The hem is faced, not turned and hemmed, so that's pretty cool, something different. <laughs> You're helping, Ray, you really are helping. I know, I appreciate that. It's kind of, it's good, that's just good information anyway because I'm still, I, 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 mean, I want to say I'm still learning, but I actually do know this pretty good now, but I'm still learning what changes cr across all the scenes that happen. So like, say I want to hide, this is really techy and probably none of you <laughs> care or are interested, but say I want to hide something in my audio panel in one of the scenes, like the stream beginning, like, oh, the stream's about to to begin and there's really no reason for there to be speakers or a microphone there. If I hide it in there, it hides it on all my scenes. So I can't do that and I'm still learning that. But apparently if I adjust the volume in one, it doesn't adjust the volume in all of the scenes, which is kind of weird. So. <laughs> it probably just depends, Sydney. Maybe like at the moment it happened, that little jump, like there was a noise in your environment and it just kind of, you just smoothed it out, you know? All right, I'm gonna do the, the back first. All right, so let's find our center back on this piece. And that way we know, I can't have the, I can't have the light too bright with this stuff. You won't be able to see it. Gonna pin it. I remember I already removed the neck seam allowance. I had such a fun little stream plan for you guys yesterday. I was gonna do kind of a like birthday stream and then the whole power wasn't on. I had a little surprise for you. Not that the surprise was a very big deal, but now I'm like, I don't know when I'm gonna fit that in. My audio Ted <laughs> Mrs. Necro, hello. <laughs> oh, well, welcome. I hope it's not a mess here for you. All right. Here's our back. So 
let's just measure where we're going to put in this dart. So from the cut edge of the shoulder, I'm going to look at it where the finished overlap is right here, right? So this is the right side of my sample here. And that's that fold is at two and seven eighths from this raw shoulder edge. And then the overlap is three quarters on this side. And let's see if it's about the same. It's almost an inch on this side. And that's at the raw edge, the, the seam cut edge, not at the seam line. And it doesn't matter as long as you are measuring in the same spot on your pattern piece as you are where you're, you're getting the information from, right? Yeah, and you're never too late here. Oh, thanks, Malin. Do I look different? <laughs> Hello, so as me, how's it going? Oh, I'm so glad. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Every time I see your name, I'm a, I my brain kind of goes, wait, all those letters look so similar. Cause like so so, you know, it's like when I see so so deaf patterns, I'm always like, that's me. I always love the name Esme. I'm assuming that's how you say it. All right, so this side is at an inch. This side's at three quarters. So we'll just do seven eighths on each side. Now, plenty of people would tell you to do the one inch on one side and the three quarters on the other side because we are not symmetrical human beings. So you can do that as well. I'm not too worried about it. I wasn't super, super nitty gritty with my fitting on there. You saw me, I was pretty cavalier about it. Now it's time to find the sharpest Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing. Green wins. All right. So we said that this was two and seven eighths <clears throat> from the shoulder line here, which is about right here. And then we're gonna go about one and a half but remember we also have the five eighths inch seam allowance here so right here okay and then we're going to cut <laughs> oh good the other funny thing about your name is my family all calls me emmy no one in my family calls me sarah me they all call me emmy and so your name makes, I can see Emmy there for a second, you know? All right, so here's my seven eighths. It's actually more than that though. It's seven eighths twice, because look, you have this amount here. Let's show you, let me show you here, All right? So this is the way you look at, when you're pinching fabric like this, when you're pinching fabric like this, this is the amount you took out. So the finished line is here to here, right? Because if you were to put this dart so that it was floppy, that would be the amount, right? That's the way you look at this. This is the amount we're taking out quite a bit. So that's the way you, when you're measuring this, try and break it down logically so you don't get confused or kind of get lost in the sauce when you're doing these kinds of changes. Because it's really easy when you get to the table to be like, there's no way I wanna take that much out. Um, and you start distrusting what you just discovered was real, you know? So it doesn't mean that the pattern's wrong, it just means that your body is different than their model's body, you know? What a surprise, right? We're all really different. So uh, you really wanna go double that amount there, right? I just measured the depth of the half. So it's about right here. And I just pivoted, I put my tape over there to make room. room. This paper right here is just the pattern pieces, but I was using Swedish tracing paper to do the little sample. And it's kind of like 
non-fusible interfacing. And it's just a, an affordable way to make, you know, like a, just a little like muslin basically. And you don't really feel bad about cutting into it or drawing on it. And you can also use it as a pattern piece as someone asked earlier, and that's a good point to bring up. Um, and then someone else said it's on sale at Waywack today. So. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm not like super Ill instructional, but I just like hanging out with you. All right, so my, my only problem now is that I've kind of taken this off the grain here. See this? So now I have this bend, right? So look at that difference. And so now I have to decide, am I just gonna take this at my new neckline right here? Whoops. This is fine. I was like, that looks like a lot. So this is my finished neck edge right here at the neckline. And if I wanted to straighten this out, am I okay with losing this little bit right here? And if I'm not, then I need to decide where I'm going to correct it. Am I going to add it here to this back neck or am I going to um, like slash and spread? Then I'd have to adjust my collar pieces. So. <laughs> so let's just check it out on the dress form again. And let's see, if I did that, how do I feel about it? So let's make this start a little bit more official. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> ah, Ray, thank you. Ooh, look at your emojis. Dang it, I am going to write myself a reminder to get that cat on the screen longer for you. Because we want that cat on there longer, right? All right, so now we have this. Now what if I were to straighten this out a little bit, which means I'm kind of kind of kind of lose a little bit through here. Like this. To nothing at the bottom. Right? We're just trying to get this flat. You cannot put shaping on a place where there is a fold. Meaning, if this piece is on the fold, it has to go on a straight line. And I think it's one of the hardest things to learn when you're doing pattern drafting changes because you get into this pickle a lot. You're like, oh, I'll just do this. And then you're like, well, shoot, now how am I gonna put it on the fold? You know, it's like um, when people wanna add fullness somewhere and they just wanna cut straight up and then stop and then spread apart the paper. It works on fabric, but it won't work on paper. And um, that's what it kind of tells you, wait a minute, you need to rectify that somehow. You know, you found the emojis, yay. Those are good ones too. <laughs> All right, so let's look at that. Let's see if there's audio change as much this time. I can't remember where the, let's see, where the, looks like the back doesn't go to my natural, like the, I have a seam here saying, that's kind of where I think my shoulder line is, you know? I think I would actually be okay. I'm not seeing anything weird right there. If I get rid of that little bit. except for the fact that it's unforgiving Swedish tra tracing paper. I think that'll be okay.
yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, so that means we need a long, nice long ruler. And we're going to trim this off. No change, awesome, that's great. See, so we're trying to get to zero at our hem down here. My ruler's not quite long enough, and so I can kind of cheat and do this. I would never do this for like a pattern client, but that works. So then we're trimming this off right here. I had to sharpen all my pencils yesterday because that was the thing I was using to plug into outlets. <laughs> to see if my outlets were working because it was so hard to tell because the lights were on. And um, at first, when I first got here, and I and I didn't have the the have power. Like the first thing I did was I tried to turn this computer on, and I thought I'm really glad this wasn't the issue too. I thought it was my battery because I have a really nice battery for this computer. That's a surge protector. That way, if the if I lose power, theoretically. I could actually have time to shut my stream down if I'm alive. That's the theory because we've all, there's been a few of us here where I will get a power flicker and what would happen was it would trigger an alarm on that stupid thing. So I got a new one where I could turn the alarm off. And I thought what happened was there was a power flicker and it turned it off to, pr to protect my computer. And so, um, and when I figured out that that's not what the case was, I was like, oh, it's all my outlets, but why are the lights on? <laughs> I was using my little pencil sharpener and plugging it in places to check and, sh and sharpening my pencils. Oh, and for the Bluetooth microphone, Beverly, what I had to do was I had to get an adapter because currently I was using the Yeti microphone, which is a USB microphone and my computer does have a microphone and a headphone jack. I just don't utilize those. And for this wireless microphone, you plug it into the headphone jack. That didn't work. And so I had to get a USB thing and I plugged it into that. And their help told me that. So. Oh, really, Nancy? That kind of makes sense. There's a lot of texture on that. All right, I'm gonna trim this off so that I don't accidentally cut it out on the wrong line. Actually, maybe what I'll just, I'll just fold it back. That way I always have it just in case. Yeah, so that's how I figured out the microphone, which was really hard because what's happening now, the, the most of the trend for live streams is people are doing it from their phone or their iPad or Android, whatever. They're doing it from a device, not a laptop. And I don't do that. And so a lot of these wireless devices like microphones are becoming more and more compatible with a portable device. And this one specifically said it was for using on a computer and also it needed to be not a laptop. I don't use a laptop, I use a computer. And so I really searched and then when I got this one and it didn't work, I was pretty disappointed. I was like, wow. I thought I had done my homework and I tried to find all kinds of videos. I did all the help. I did all that and all of them, they addressed something different. So, so I just used their help, which took forever. They replied to me while I was away. All right. So now that's our new fold line. I just took out that shoulder. Look how much I took out because I am the hunchback of paradise basically. And I'm fine with that title. I don't care. It's going up and down. Don't say that. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's going up and down. I can, it looks okay on here. It goes down now and then. And you think it's when I'm moving my head? We can always go back to the other one. I think at this table, I could use the other one pretty easily. It's when I'm using the sergers and stuff, that's when it gets tricky. All right. Am I bumping it? So maybe I need to do 
this, is that better? Right, Beverly? It's terrible. I'm so sick of it. Yesterday, I was having one of those days where I was like, why do I do this? I just want to sew with people and help people. It could be my hair. I have a lot of that. You guys are nice and patient with me, but if it becomes a problem, just tell me and we can put the, I'll put the Yeti back. Why doesn't that look straight? Is it my camera? Is it just an optical illusion? <laughs> it looks crooked. <laughs> when I bend over. Is it better now that I moved it to the outside? Maybe I should get the little microphone thingy that plugs into it. I didn't want to get anything until I knew it worked. Yeah, you like that? Isn't that pretty? Really nice. And hi, Elizabeth, how's it going? It's got a little spandex in there too. Yeah, this is why I bought it. I saw, um, like, I think an Instagram post or something, and I was like, ooh, she was having like, a day dress month, and I'm into day dresses. All right. It definitely looks one way, unless you guys want to argue about it again, and I'll go against whatever you say. <laughs> oh, it's better that way? Okay. Better on the outside? All right. It's so heavy. I had to do a lot of um, like figuring out the timing because like doing this to make sure it was in sync. We shall go over, over God. yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell me, yeah, I love the feedback, so it's good. I think it'll be really helpful later because it'll help me switch scenes faster because I won't have to deal with it. All right, can I get three of you on here? Most likely not. It'd be really nice if the fabric was um, two-way. That way I could go like this. So if you have a print that's two-way, you could probably stick one of these in upside down. This is one thing about princess seam projects is the pattern pieces are uh, a little bit cumbersome. So and I wanted to show you the other pieces that come with it. So you have, this is the bow, a little bow detail that goes on the back. There's facings, so if you're really skint on fabric, you could skip the facings and add a hem to your piece. This is the little cap sleeve, which I'm still not sure about. I want it to be longer. And then there's a collar collar stand. They only give you one collar pattern. There's no top or un an under collar. So we'll put these little guys off to the side. <laughs> okay, so what I'm thinking about is how I could fold this so that maybe I can get a better yield. Because if I was a little more like this, putting the fold there, then I would at least have room for one front or one side front in that fabric over there. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. So we need it to be about so it needs to be a longer. Um, I don't know how you would figure out your green line without a longer longer one. It's 
Just want to see if I'm in the neighborhood. Yeah, I'm pretty close, so it would swing this way a tiny bit. And this one would swing this way a little bit, so I need to push it that way. All right, so then we need to fold it about right there. So what have you guys been sewing? What have you guys been up to? So I had this idea this morning to make a rug. And I was thinking what I would do is use the um, floor poof pattern by Closet Core at the top, you know, and make like a little round rug. What do you guys think of that? And then on the underside, like, so basically I'd be making like a little quilt, but you could put piping around the edge or binding around the edge instead. No sides, no opening. And then um, making the underside a non-skid fabric. I can find that by the yard, can't I? Pretty sure I can. Cause I think using like banana, banana, <laughs> Pajama feet, <laughs> pajama, pajama, like non-skid pajama stuff would be a little, that'd be a little expensive, you know, that might add up a little bit. Oh, nice, Terry. Oh, the Amherst by Hey June. So Terry, did you use like a tracing wheel or did you just take it apart? You finished all your finals with Dina. Nice. Hey, Sutter. Greetings. Sheer two top, nice. Oh, I bet on your six year old. Your hands on a petticoat. That is so cool. Oh, awesome, Sydney. You've been sewing. <laughs> I've been sewing. <laughs> I like that. All right, 21 and 3 So I'm just kind of making sure I have this fold. Still on the green, you know. 21 and 5 eighths. 21, I'm pretty close. Oh, an ankle length Pona jacket. Wow. Oh, the North Star. What's the North Star? Which one's that? Out of white linen. That sounds stunning. There's a show your mom. The Alexa jumpsuit, cute. Oh. <laughs> Why do you have tons to iron? Oh, cool, Terry, yeah. So then you could preserve your favorite dress and not like, take it apart, which is kind of nice. I think it's nice for reference too, you know? Sure, I'm completely on the table. So I did get um, some fabric on my trip and um, I'll probably, I think that's what I'm gonna talk about in my Friday sews this week. I can't believe it's already Thursday. Which will be fun, like Sunday, we're gonna celebrate my birthday. I'll see my parents. They took care of our pets. They had to drive all the way out to our house every day. Oh, I'm barely on the cutting mat. Can you see that? <laughs> Not really, huh? Why does it look so um, crooked? I guess it is crooked on the table though. Long sleeve, short zip top from, oh yeah. Okay, I actually was showing my husband that because he, he likes those kinds of knit tops for cycling. Oh, that's cool, Libby. I did, the little short trench, it's really cute. A little doll dress, nice. That's so cute. Damn man, doll sewing is so tiny. You know, like 
that kind of sewing is, ooh. People would say, do you make all your, you know, your daughter's clothes, you know, when I was, uh, when she was younger, I'm like, no. <laughs> and, um, and then like sometimes, you know, people would say, oh, I bet your mom makes all of your Barbie clothes. My daughter didn't play with Barbie. So I'd be like, oh my gosh, no, I don't have that kind of patience to do that. No way. That tiny, tiny sewing is just not for me. Don't forget your notches when you're doing princess seams. They're pretty helpful. They're really helpful, especially on the front. And then uh, the other thing I suggest is making sure you don't get your side fronts and your side backs confused. Princess seams were really, really popular when I was learning to sew. And I definitely made that mistake once or twice. You can't get away with it either. Like, <laughs> I had boobs, <laughs> there's no way. Oh, we need to make this at a right angle here, which I forgot to do. The neckline right here, you see that? Cause it kind of pitched it at a little bit of an angle and we need that at a, a right angle right there. So that's pretty much the only trimming off at the back neck I ended up doing with all those changes. I'm kind of far away from my pattern to be cutting it. It's a little tricky. All right. I'm gonna notch my center back neck. Maybe a little more than that. That's it. I don't really need the pattern pieces. We'll keep them with it for now. I did some of those miniature quilt box, some being the operative word there. <laughs> I also lost my steam on that stuff. Remember? <laughs> yeah, I've got them right here. It would be interesting to see a Barbie clothing factory. I remember when you were doing that, Nancy. A leopard print viscose Roscoe blouse. I like that Roscoe blouse, Hannah. That's a pretty blouse. I like that. It reminds me of, um, is that by Blink Slate? Ooh, I'm wrong. By, is it True Bias? Oh, I'm so bad at things like that. You guys are really good. Four lightweight sweaters, nice. I still can't get over your pun that you entered with Libby. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> All right, so this is the piece that was on the side of that. So, you know, I don't have any other pieces left on the fold. So I could use this as like a side front that seems to take up more of this and then that saves a lot of fabric, you know? Yeah, no. So let's just cut this off and we'll save this. Dang. I love how generous she is with the fabric. Um, I wanna cut this off right here. It is true by, see, I got it. Woo. <laughs> oh, really, Martina? That is so nice. A Shelby for your birthday. Wait, wait, what's the Shelby again, Malone? The true by Shelby dress. Oh, okay. Hi, Kristen. Cool. Um, yeah, I think Sydney was kind of interested in princess seams too, I saw on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I sewed so many of these when I was younger. 
And I really liked it because, I, you know, like I said, I have always had kind of an hourglass and I think the um, princess seams are pretty forgiving for that, you know, they really help. I hate that it looks crooked, but it's like, this looks pretty straight. I'm not OCD, you are. <laughs> I've been in streams, uh, gaming streams, where like we're all into the stream gameplay, the gameplay of the streamer, and but then there's like something on the screen like that the streamer has written like, you know, kind of like how I have this logo here. He'll put text without the little banner, right? So let's say it just said his website. Streamers don't have websites, but let's just say he had one. It would say maybe like sub goal or whatever, and it's like, one space out of line with something else he has on the screen and all of a sudden everybody will become so laser focused <laughs> so i know from experience being in lots of streams that lots of people it, it's it's kind of stressful to be around something that's like out of whack on the on the screen as far as proportion and how things are lined up so um i'm sensitive to that <laughs> It'll definitely take over the stream. And even the streamer's like, oh my gosh, you're right. You know? All right, so let's get this a little bit. All right, so this is the front. Cut to uh, this placket is just like how the Mellow Low top is, which is also done by Deer and Doe. I'm not like a super fan. I don't know why I'm doing some two, two of their things in a row. It just happens. It just happens. Uh, this placket's done the same way. So you're going to interface all the way over here, this section here, and then you just fold it over. But when you go to do this, what you've done is you've ironed, you've ironed, and then you know right where to line up this interfacing. It does give me a little bit of anxiety when I do it though, trust me. <laughs> I'm always like, oh gosh, I hate cutting out these really narrow pieces like this. Long, skinny, narrow pieces are just the worst. I just wish I had like a machine that did it, you know? And, um, but once you've have the, you know, if you've folded an iron, folded an iron, you have this nice little edge. And then all you do is stitch it down. It's already done for you. Like you're, you're kind of there. So. <laughs> Sorry, I just whacked the microphone, huh? The Shelby. Yeah, you know, Mrs. Necro, I, I don't, I'm not OCD about that kind of stuff, but I am very um, motivated by proportion and silhouettes of things and how they line up and fit together. Um, and it's, I don't feel like that's a, a technically an OCD thing. It's just how I think, I think it, it dovetails right into being a pattern drafter. I'm very um, spatially aware, you know, like pa parallel parking and things like that. I'm really, really quite good at things like that. And I don't think there's anything like OCD about it. I have, my, I definitely have my foibles that way, you know, like my quirks for sure about things. It's just how I'm wired. I've got that engineering type of thing. Where's that? Oh, there it is. It's kind of weird to cut, you know, like this was, isn't what I cut off for my prototype. That's why I have it. All right, so make sure you do your notches on the princess seam of your front and your side front. They are very, very important. Um, the other thing with sewing princess seams is the seam line. You really have to be accurate with the seam allowance, especially with seam allowance this large, this is five eighths of an inch. Um, the bigger the seam allowance, it's harder to do the curve. And if if you don't, like if you're, 
if you don't sew uh, princess seams, like if you guys don't know what we're talking about, like why people are, okay, I'm gonna do princess seams, I want some tips. It's because I think if you're a novice sewist, you don't realize when you're looking at princess seams that it's one curve opposite to the other. So you look at this and you think, oh yeah, no problem, I can, I can sew that. And you can see, look, here's a dart and here's a dart. And so by making the pattern piece go along the dart legs on either side, you've just cut out the darts and you've added the shaping. But when you put this right sides together like this, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to sew this together like that. And I think like you see that a lot with um, rookie designers, you know, they'll design a top and they'll be like, oh, hey, I'm going to do a top and it's going to have a big, cool curve, you know, contrast motif through here, right? And they're in design school. They don't even know how to sew yet. And, um, and I've been there, I've totally done this to myself. And then you go to sew it and, and this is what you're dealing with, you know. These are your pattern pieces and you have to sew it like this <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> go around this curve <laughs> and get it on there. And then you also need to get it to lay nice and flat, right? We see quilters, um, battle with this and prevail because they've got, they've spent a lot of time learning those techniques, you know? So princess seams are really great for shaping, but they can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes depending on how aggressive it is. They're very common in formal wear. Can you do that, Hannah? You can buy a roll of interfacing already cut narrow. I didn't know that. What's it for? OD is actually the lesser known diagnosis. What is OD? Oh, Nancy, that's a good point. If you don't have an hourglass shape, but then you sew something in hourglass, it definitely gives that illusion. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. You know, um, when I was a kid and I'd be like laying in bed, you know, going to bed, going to sleep or whatever, I would be, you know, looking at the ceiling. And, you know, when I was a kid, my, my mom and I lived in apartments or whatever, condominium. Um, and if the lines didn't line up perfectly <laughs> in the corners or the window wasn't parallel to the corner of the room, I would zero in on it and just stare at it and it would bug me. <laughs> and it was just, it would be so glaring to me. You know, I just didn't understand like, why is it like that? <laughs> You know, here I am, six years old. <laughs> All right, so now I'm like, okay, do I cut this in the middle of my fabric to save as much fabric? Do I really need a continuous piece along that selvage? Eh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's that my spare piece is connected to my um, fabric along the selvage there. Because remember, I cut this one layer off, right? So I have, I have a lot of fabric here. So this is when you start thinking, how do I want my extra fabric to be? I have plenty to do my other pieces. I don't think there's anything wrong with having this piece in the middle connected to the bottom. It's usable either way. We don't have L-shaped pattern pieces in general. So I'll just line this up on the selvages. It'll make it easier. Why not? Be nice to myself this way, right? I deserve it. <laughs> oh, obsessive disorder, yeah. Is it, yeah, I, I have a feeling that, that people say they have OCD and I'm like, no, 
I don't think so, you know. I feel like we use that term. It's okay to want things a certain way. <laughs> right, Mrs. Necro? Yeah. For waistbands and button plaques, I sell them. Oh, Anna. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, interesting. <laughs> You'd have a meltdown. Yeah, there is funny things that I'll notice that no one else will, and I just don't bring it up. Mainly because I wouldn't want someone else to be like, oh no, that's all I can see now. You know, I'm like, I'm sorry. And then other times I'm like, don't you guys, doesn't this bug you? It's just like, I like proportion and the way things relate to one another. I'm just extending my grain line so I can make sure I'm kind of, you know, am I being uh, really careful about the grain line? I kind of am. Um, I'm mainly because you have to remember this piece here, it's really hard to see, you know, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't take off that amount on my front that I wanted to take off. Why didn't I do that? Well, shoot. Well, maybe that's just something I'll take off later because it was just right here on this princess seam. It wasn't such a ba bad place. We'll see how it hangs. But I forgot I was going to do that. All right, that's 10 and 3 eighths plus. So if you were doing this garment in stripes, you would absolutely probably want to make sure you're cutting everything on the grain line really nicely because the way the stripes will wrap around the body or um, whether they're horizontal or vertical, you will notice if it's off grain. It'll look off to you. And it's because up here at the bodice, when all these pieces are sewn together, you want your stripes to be vertical and parallel. Now, will they be perfectly parallel where there's seams? No, but that's okay. You know, remember the stripes are going like this, right? They're going up through here. And then the stripes on this pattern piece, same thing, right? That front. And so if they're really wide stripes, the seamst seamsters and sewists will take care to either match them here or match them here, depending on what kinds they are, if they're vertical or horizontal, um, especially in smaller spaces like, um, uh, uh, like formal wear, you know, if there's a waist seam and you're just doing this little bodice but you can absolutely drive yourself crazy trying to match up plaids and lines when you have princess seams. And it's funny, Rayanne, um, my old, old assistant, when I met her, she said when she was in school, because she, she took a fashion program um, at her school, she said one of the things she did to herself was make, made a plaid of princess seamed garment. <laughs> and she said, Man, I drove myself crazy trying to match everything up. I didn't realize it wasn't possible. And, and it is in certain places, but you can't do it all the way around because it would have to be the right dimension of plaid, like the amount. It would have to be a two-way plaid. Um, it would have to be the right dimension for your pattern pieces. There's a lot going on. You know, it's, you know, because it's woven and ah, there's, a, there's a lot of struggles. But if you cut this off grain and say these stripes were going like this, you know, that's really exaggerating that they're going across and the, the center front's going like this, unless you were trying to get that effect where I've seen that, I've seen people do that. Well, they'll put the, the side uh, front and side back on the diagonal so that the stripes are kind of doing something kind of cool. You can do that, but you will notice it. It's just, your mind is gonna go, wait a minute, why is that like that? All right, paper, scrap in. Notches. Oh gosh, it's 
just made that a little harder on myself, didn't I? I feel like I'm cutting on that fabric, but I'm just not, am I? All right. Side front. Yeah, I've actually done things where um, if something in the room is off center, I'll offset it with something else so that it balances it out. That that works for me. I can do that. Yeah, I think the thing to focus with your pattern matching is when you work on it um, at the the pieces that are front and center at your back and your front, and don't worry about the side seams as much. If you're doing something like a like a button down shirt, all you have are the side seams to match. That's when you do those. So, and you can always do like a little mock up too to kind of see. All right, so this, I need, these are all hem facings, this right here. And this one's probably on the fold. We don't like that, do we? <laughs> I mean, you know, like I'm really liking this gigantic piece I have down here. What could I do with that? It's like a half yard. Look at that. <laughs> we'll probably get down there. I can see my, my grain line on this, which is great. So I could cut these there. Could I get my collar here? I probably can. And my collar stand. Yes, bow and cap sleeve. All right, so let's get two of these. Oh, you're making an archer button up for the first time, nice. I've definitely made a bunch of those. I really like that pattern. Yeah, in fact, most of the pa the the tutorials you see when I'm doing like, um, when I do the shirt sleeve cuff with a placket and when I do the, oh, sorry. Uh, when I do the um, collar, collar stand video, those are all Archer. They're just such a good, it's a good standby, you know? And then when I do the shirt sleeve, the tower placket, that is the uh, Fairfield, the men's. <laughs> it's actually impossible for my camera to be lined up straight because it's kind of like a fisheye. <laughs> I've let that go, but it still bugs me. Where am I going? I like to do this sometimes. Just kind of give myself something to aim for, you know? This is the hem facing. It's gonna make the finish at the center front placket so nice. I love that kind of finish at the hem placket area. Oh, interesting. Hi, Ursula. Nice to see you. So the your Singer 15 does smaller? I do, Libby. I actually have a, a, a sleeve pattern. Uh, there's not, Beverly. There's, there's actually, interestingly, there's seams on the Fairfield if you want a more tailored look. That's the men's shirt. Um, 
on the archer, what you're thinking of is there's that inset with the gathered uh, lower portion. All right, these are on the fold. So I'm gonna fold them uh, wrong side up so that I can see the grain line on my fabric. Yeah. And actually, this would make my print, no, this would make my print right side up. I'm wrong. All right, so let's do this and this, and we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut it off because, oh, it's getting cloudy out there and kind of rainy looking, and I am down for that. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to see if I can fit. Yeah, I could. All right. We'll cut them both. Ooh, can I do it? Can I do it? Let's see here. Ooh, <laughs> that's close. So you guys didn't think my uh, snarky sew along was too snarky then. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, you're busy today. That's nice. I mean, it's good to be busy sometimes, right? But sometimes, yeah, I definitely sometimes sit down in my chair and I'm like, ah, I made it, you know? I love that feeling. Catching up on whatever happened during the day that I missed. I'm just going to cut this off so we can see all the layers. Let's see if I did it. This is my size right here, 46. There's a little bit of a flare to this uh, collar. I'm scared of flares. I'm always worried something's gonna look a little bit 70s. Sorry. Not a fan. Um, here is my, I really need to get a new highlighter. This one's definitely dying, but it works for this. My other ones are kind of like a crayon tip and it le leaves re residue. Oh, good, are they? That's good. I feel like um, the camera quality could be better, but that is a little out of our league now, right now. All right. Uh, wow. <laughs> I don't know which one's mine. So we'll just leave this on here. There's a circle and a notch. Um, I can't really see what's mine. Oh, you have hers a little? Oh, wow. Before, is your school year end in June? And you still, you guys still went back? I know my husband's work, he's starting to go in occasionally and work um, at the office. And I think that they decided that they're going to be fully back when schools are back. So that way parents don't have to struggle with finding care. All right, wait, which one's mine? This one's mine. Look for the dots. I'm having definitely a trouble finding my notch. I think it's this one right here. I don't really need this notch though. The notch I need, the ones that I really like, I like, I definitely could do my center back here. Let's do that at least. Center back on the collar stand. Center back um, on this one as well, where it sews to the collar stand, which is at the top, not the perimeter bottom edge here. So I just notched the center here. Um, it goes like this. What I really like is a notch here on the collar stand telling me where the collar ends and then I like a shoulder notch. 
that that's really all you need. <clears throat> all right, so we just need the back him facing. You know, my back is opposite again. Oh. Oh, it's like through marshmallows. <laughs> oh, that does sound really hard. <laughs> Let's see, can I get this here? Let's see. Maybe. Ooh, here's my size. I can, look at that. Nice. Oh, there's a big slit right here. We'll avoid that. Let's see here. All right. Oh, and those of you who are in that third tier of Patreon and they're the Saturday Zoom, it's this Saturday. I'm going to send you a link today. Just so you know. Keep an eye out for it. Because it's not our usual Saturday. So I have to give you a different, I think I have to give you a different link. I'll look at it. And I'll let you know. And then the Tuesday one is next week as well. Because this one, I was out of town last week. All right, so this, I'm going to notch the center back at the bottom hem because that'll be helpful. It's nice to give yourself like a halfway point. All right, so what did we decide? I think I'll do this bow. I kind of like the idea of there being something back there. Let's see. Oh, you have Charlie. <laughs> okay, yeah, none of this is big enough. Fine. I'm not really into cutesy stuff, but um, I really like it when the back has something interesting on it. This already has princess seams. That would that would totally fit the bill for me usually. You get more work done at home than in the office. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Meaning your children are adults and they're away. Yeah, they're not in. They're not at home. Yeah. I always have done really well working at home. I had to take our dog to, well, it took both the dogs to get their nails trimmed and Molly to get a bath on, uh, on Tuesday. And I forget that the groomer there is someone I took a quilting class with, with and I haven't seen her in a while, so. It was kind of fun to see her. What made, you, what made you just think of that? You just made me think of her for some reason. I can't think of what it was now. But um, I don't know. Whoa. Shoot, sorry. I don't know why I was telling you all that now. <laughs> yeah, my husband's just going back once, one day a week. He went today. Oh, I guess maybe I was thinking of the, the animals getting used to that, you know? Oh. I don't know. Certainly was not important, probably. Yeah, see, I would like that, Kristen. All right. So this little sleeve, so here's the little sleeve, and this is how you do it. You, you know, fold it in half, right? And then, so then it gets sewn into the cap. This is a double notch. That's a single notch. And then there's your shoulder. So you don't really have to ease it into the armhole. It's pretty simple to sew in, but it also, it's like very, it's like right here across the top of my bicep. That is just so unflattering on me. Um, I thought about making it a flutter sleeve, but Man, my shoulders are already so broad and straight across that I kind of look like Wonder Woman-ish or superhuman, not su super, what am I trying to say? Um, Superhero-ish, you know, like, <laughs> like little wings up there. <laughs> 
So um, I don't know if that's really the thing for me either, but I'm not really a big fan of sleeveless. So I could try my, um, the sleeve I'm wearing right now, this is the Scout tee and I drafted this sleeve. That would work. It's here somewhere. Here it is. All right. So here is my sleeve. I should have done this before I cut out my garment because now, look at this armhole. That certainly does not look like the armhole I have, right? I may have to go with the sleeveless. I was being very lazy not figuring this out first. Because the thing is, you can't just add a sleeve to a sleeveless armhole. You need a little more ease in the armhole, you know? But I'm feeling really mellow today, so I just kind of started. Let's check it out. So um, this is the Grain Line Studio Scout, and I usually make their armholes um, deeper and a little bigger. The sleeves there, they feel drafted for um, very small arms and shoulders. So. I'm just gonna compare. If it's kind of crazy amount different, probably it's gonna go with sleeveless. We can try the cap sleeve and I could maybe make it a little bigger. I don't know. <laughs> I have a feeling this will be just way too different. Plus it's a little late. All right, so. This is my armhole. This is my back. Set that over there. It's the back. Look how big that is. Is that really? Is that really? Yeah, maybe it is. Okay. This is literally the shirt I'm wearing right now. That's why that does kind of help, right? Yeah, right? I know, that's what we're thinking too. We're, we're wondering how the dogs are gonna be because um, our daughter, you know, is moving out this summer. So, so let's put this on. Get this removable tape so I can just tape my pattern pieces together. So, this armhole is definitely going to be higher up. See that? Oh, but it's not circumference wise, it's not too bad. So, I could just trim off this amount here. And it would be really close to my back armhole for the scout. All right. 
let's see how the front looks before we go, woohoo, <laughs> you know? This is a closer fitting garment than the Scout. That's why I was kind of thinking I could get away with you doing this after the fact that I've already cut it out. Let's line this up. I mean, it does reach. See that? We could try it. I'm down. I then I could do this little cap sleeve. Yeah. I think I would wear it more. This is the back. This is the front. So I added a uh, snaps to that mellow low and I recorded it. So I'm gonna try and edit that and get that up too. It's, um, it was such a nice fast way to do buttons and buttonholes. Someone mentioned that recently. They said that someone they knew stopped doing buttons and buttonholes. They're just doing snaps now. And I was like, huh, it's kind of an interesting idea, you know? I'm just gonna put some pins in for the overlap here. Like this. You gotta line it up on the seam line right here at the armhole. You see this little bit sticking out and that's okay because when the seam allowance is pressed, it, it's gonna get pressed towards the body right here so then it would line up with that. So <clears throat> you wanna line it up on that 5 8 inch seam and then we'll just pin it so that it doesn't move. Okay. Here goes nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so calm. You know, I feel like, um, I do feel really calm. It's done now. I feel really calm. Oh, Mrs. Necro has the cutest little parrot. Um, she put a picture of it in the Facebook group. I sent a picture of it to my mom, this is Necro. She thought it was so cute. She's always wanted a parrot. And I have to say, I'm really thankful that she hasn't gotten a parrot because they live for so long. Oh, you are Allison Palmer. Yeah, right, right, Terry. After doing that um, little video, I was kind of like, this was really satisfying, you know, like if I, like I just love that it was just kind of done, you know, and I didn't have to even use a machine. I just put those snaps on um, and I, did, I used ring snaps. So they're a little more forgiving, I think, than like cap snaps because the ring snaps, you don't really have to drill a hole in your fabric. So if you had to reposition it and you, you know, the snap wasn't completely, you know, messed up and chewed up your fabric or something, then you could, you could, you could pretty much reposition it. You might have a few little holes, but they'd probably wash out over time, you know? And so I was just like, this is kind of cool. Like it's done. And then I was like, Ooh, gadgets. Cause when I was at that fabric place, I was, I saw they had them. <laughs> I think the trick is finding the snaps, enough variety of snaps that you like um, the options and the diameter, you know? So, oh yeah, Quaker Parrot. I just love the name of him too. Ooh, look at that, Libby. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know me, I will sacrifice my garment just for you. I wanna see how much I trimmed off and make sure. Why is it different? <laughs> I may need to trim off more on the front because this is feeling a little bit like I didn't trim off enough there. I couldn't, I can't reverse this anyway, so we'll check it when we get there. And now let's cut out some sleeves. I love all the jammy tops I made, you guys. Like, I am, I love them. The, this, it's interesting, because remember, one of them, um, one of them looked, it didn't look like cross-stitch, but it had like little tiny gray dots all over it. That was the cotton knit. One was a bamboo or tencel or rayon knit. The other two were. One of those was sleeveless, one of those had a sleeve, and I love them all. The cotton knit, is doesn't, it's not as like drapey and flowy, but it definitely um, is super comfortable. So, monk parakeets, that's right. <laughs> that's nice, I was just watching from bed. I, there are a few streamers I put on just to fall asleep. Just like they're gentle talking or whatever. <laughs> All right, so my fabric is still right side up. Yep. Could I get one here and then one here? Hmm. Hmm, I don't think so, but it's worth a try because then maybe I would have a little bit more fabric left. Sometimes you don't want to have too much fabric because it's like, what would I do with this weird shaped piece, you know? Oh, ooh, is it on green for the most part? Just looking at my green line here. I think that that works. I did draft this sleeve on camera and it was the scout, one of the scout tees. I have drafted a sleeve from scratch. It's in the pattern drafting playlist. Um, I do a lot with sleeves. I'm not afraid of them. So, oh, nice, Beverly. <laughs> is not the most friendly. Yeah, exactly. And you said yours is pretty young, right? So he's not really talking quite yet or, or that you rescued him maybe. What was the deal? I could probably stand to take a little bit of ease out of this to make it a little easier to sew on. But honestly, this sleeve fits me really nice. I really love how comfortable it is. And you know, it's still pretty short, you know? The other one goes like up to here. I just feel like it makes me feel a little bit like, you know? So. All right. I marked the back. Let's mark. I'm I'm gonna mark the shoulder, since I did you know lay on the armhole. I didn't mark uh, front and back notches on my armhole because I don't really need that. We're ready to go. These are pattern pieces as well. So let's lay them all out. My mom had birds at, when I was a kid and they didn't really bug me, but I've, uh, I've stayed with people with birds and whew, some of the noises, it's just not for me. I don't think I realized how quiet our house was <laughs> until I've gone to stay with other people. My, my husband, and my daughter both startle at loud noises. I'm the I'm the rhino at the house. Totally the rhino. Like I'm the loud elephant, you know. And even I now notice how loud things are when when I'm there compared to when I'm not. <laughs> All 
All right, so we'll lay out our pattern pieces. This is the front and this is the back here. It's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be very pretty. <laughs> Got my sleeve. I got a bow even. Pretty cool. Ready. Uh, so what do you guys think? Serger or French seams though? French seams on princess seams are totally doable. That wouldn't be my favorite, but it would be nice. Yeah, right, Mrs. Necro? And the thing is, my pet, my dogs are definitely, especially the, the little one, he definitely likes attention. Have any of you played that game Among Us or seen that game Among Us? And in that game, the little people, I won't tell you the whole premise of the game, but the people walk around. Sometimes people will equip a little critter that just kind of is near their, their character. It doesn't do anything. It just hangs out and it's always walking with them wherever they go. There's this little critter. That is me and my little dog. I never thought I'd be one of those people that has a little dog that follows them around. And it is, I call him my little barnacle. If you've watched, or I mean, or read the Golden Compass series and the kids, kids and adults have a familiar or a daemon. Um, that is how my little pug is. He's like a little, he's always where I'm at. It's taking a lot for me to get used to it. Because I will just turn around and trip over him, forgetting he's there all the time. So, I have a new serger. <laughs> it's five-eighths of an inch. I have plenty, plenty to do it. <laughs> I really was so gross. It's funny. The bark of a god. <laughs> <laughs> they can mimic sounds so like car alarms and things I was thinking if we had one it would mimic our coffee grain or coffee machine because we have a espresso machine <laughs> or the dog the dogs you know oh Ray I bet you're still here I don't know but um I have an Ollie report so Ollie yeah Ray's here so Ollie the cat Totally went MIA while we were out of town and my mom and Cricket's friend could not lure him out. And so they, we were all kind of worried and Cricket stayed, she wasn't going to stay where we were at. She, was, she was, drove separately so she could stay a couple days with her friend and then she almost came home with us. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm confident I can lure him out because she and I sound a little similar so I'm kind of hoping I could get him out. And he showed up immediately when we got like within like an hour of being home. So I was so relieved and, and he hasn't left her lap since she's been home. So that's great. But man, I just gotta get that cat indoors, man. I gotta get him acclimated to our house. You know? He don't miss, yeah, exactly. I learned I'm allergic to birds. Oh yeah. Yeah, Adina, my husband is allergic to chickens. We didn't know that until we were convalescing one in our bathroom tub. Um, and he broke out complete hives. It was bad. I had to move the chicken into my studio, my sewing studio, and do this whole like little, um, not tent, but kind of like a tent around her so that she wouldn't get anything dusty in there. Because I had client stuff. It was tough. You had a lovebird, and did you have two? I've heard you have to have two of those, but I might be wrong. Maybe that's just something something people say. Well, and you know, Mrs. Necro, our chickens have an oil gland. Chickens have an oil gland, but they're super, their follicle of their feather is so, like it's always shedding. They're so dusty. Oh, really, Miss Necro? Oh. Oh, that was a bummer, Adina. At least it's not a very common thing, you know. Yeah, Ray, exactly. I'm sure he was just watching my mom and Cricket's friend and just being like, uh-uh, you guys aren't her. I'm not coming out. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and that chicken was, he had been mauled by a neighbor dog. She survived. That, that chicken was 14 years old. Man, she was a tough old bird, literally. <laughs> yeah, no, he got hives. And, I, and apparently it's not uncommon to be allergic to chickens. Oh, Corey, hi. Thank you. That's nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look at your profile picture, it looks so cute. I miss seeing all your guys' names and profile pictures. How come I don't see that in my own chat? Dang. And where's your alert? Why isn't it happening? What the heck? Let's see, there it is. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. <laughs> You had the, you had finches. I wonder if you could still have those. We love lurkers. Lurkers are welcome. Lurking is kind of nice sometimes. It's like having company without entertaining them. <laughs> well be her, behaved. Have I heard about Luna? I used to have a chicken named Luna. <laughs> Luna. Lovebird? I feel like I've heard that phrase. I feel like it's raining outside, is it? It is. Oh, that's a big thing. All right, well, um, I'll be here Saturday. We're going to sew this up. Um, why it makes me do not. <laughs> I don't know, Corey. Because for the low, low price of $4.99, I know that is really weird. Ray does it differently. She has, she did her super chat and it was five even. I don't know why. Cat for Corey. <laughs> all right, so yeah, uh, let's see. I wanted to sew this completely all the way through on Saturday. Um, I don't, oh, actually. I'm over here. Uh, that's my May calendar. And I don't have anything for next to next Wednesday. See, it says TBD, which is to be determined. And then also uh, next Wednesday or next week, we're going to be talking about drafting our own blocks. What's the other one? Yeah, so we're gonna be talking about drafting our own blocks next week. I'm gonna be trying out the one that I made on um, the freesewing.org. Yay, I know, right, Libby? Exactly, Libby's not too far from me. Oh, she went to another farm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Luna, God, you have a good memory, Ray. Yeah, you're welcome, Kathleen. I hope you got some unpacking and you're settling in back home, home, home. You know, Kathleen, yesterday my plan was, I have this little surprise for my stream. It's not a big deal. It was just gonna be funny. Um, and I was gonna make you a gift. I didn't think you'd be there though. And um, then my power was out yesterday. So now I'm behind. So, okay, so this is what I wanna ask you guys next Wednesday. This is my idea. I could make this sewing part one and part two. That would probably be a very good call, right? Especially if we do French seams. It's got a collar, a collar stand, set in sleeve, princess seams, buttons and buttonholes. It's, it's kind of a bigger project for than one stream. I also have all those underwear cut out and I now have underwear elastic. So I really want to fit that in, but I could do that the first week of June. Um, and then next week we're going to be talking about drafting our own blocks. And so I have drafted a block on camera and I feel like um, it's a lot of work to do it from scratch. And so what I'm thinking is I'm trying to find you guys some good options for, for doing your own block without having to do all that drafting work. All you have to do is fit it. 
So there, you can buy blocks on Etsy. I've seen a few there. The free sewing one, you put in your, your measurements, you pick the with boobs or without boobs, depending on how your fit is, if you're straight or curvy. And um, doesn't matter your gender or how you identify because we're gonna, you're gonna fit it once you get it out of, you know, once you, you know, create it and it spits it out and you print it out and you sew it up, then you're gonna fit it. So um, I'm gonna test one next week. I already have my own block because I have a dress form, right? So I'm going to try that one out and we're gonna see how it goes. I have it printed, it's right here. Um, it's, all, it's all printed. I have a front, a back, and a sleeve. I'm gonna try it out. I also think I'm, I have the pant too, but I'm gonna wait to do that. Cause I really wanna start doing some streams where um, we draft things together. So, so yeah, so doing your own block is a lot of work and it's worth it because once you have it, it's really, everything else is just so much easier. So you have to be willing to sort out your block. I can't fit it for you. You know what I mean? It definitely takes some effort on your part, but it's manageable effort. If you start with something that is in the ballpark and you may need a little help from someone, but if I, I don't have help from anybody, I don't have anyone here helping me. So I try and do it by myself too. It does mean you're going to need some spare fabric that you're going to have to cut and cut and sew, cut and sew, cut and sew, cut and sew, you know, until you get there. But if you start with something that's kind of in the ballpark, I think that that's, um, cuts down on that. So I'm really hoping, I think Melin tried the free sewing one. I don't know if she's sewed it up yet. She may have already gone off to bed too, but um, I'm wondering how it is and how good it is. Hopefully it's good, you know, because that would be really easy and it's free. And I'm gonna contact them also and see if there's a way we can do flat donations to them because they have a Patreon and I don't really wanna sign up for their Patreon. Um, I would, I would like to compensate them for the free block, which is pretty cool, so. And then they have patterns too. So anyway, uh, that I talked about in a past stream, but I'll put it, I'll link it in chat. You can check it out if you're, if you, I had never heard of this till someone told me. Um, here we go. How did it go, Libby? So in one of my Friday shows, you haven't, okay, Melin, me too. I'm in the same boat. Um, in one of my Friday shows, I show how to get there and how to do it. So um, I can't remember which one it is though. Just message me if you want me to find it. I'll tell you which one it is. But yeah, I kind of show how you just little steps to do it. You have to take a lot of measurements, but be accurate. And the more accurate you are, the less fussing you'll have to do with your block, right? So check it out. Um, and now I know why some guys were like, oh, I've only made patterns from free sewing. I thought that was a completely different website. And now I know that that is actually a website that creates patterns based on your, your measurements. So it's worth a try, right? So, so anyway, we need to decide what we're gonna do next Wednesday. I can make this a part two stream and then the underwear the next stream, next week. But we're gonna talk about drafting blocks and how to get the best one we can. Really, Libby? That's great. Yeah, the, the, the dart is in a really awkward spot goes right up against the armhole there. That is no problem to move, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, so here it is. Just need to tape mine together. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I already have my own block, but I'm definitely gonna try that out and see how it goes, compare it. Maybe it's better than my block. <laughs> Buttonholes on my Juki. I don't have the buttonhole attachment. I was thinking that would have been part of my stream yesterday was trying that buttonhole attachment on there. This is the thing. People don't realize if I lose one day of streaming, 
how uh, crazy my schedule gets. We have so many things happening like that I want to do because we got the 100 Acts of Sewing book. She sent me that and a ton of fabric to play with. And I think that that um, will be such a great thing to do during our whole block thing, right? And then I have a lot of menswear I'm going to sew. And then we got the serger and the cover stitch. I really want to sew a lot of knits. So we have a lot of fun things going on. So maybe I'll do more streams and fewer uploaded videos. We'll see. So it's hard because I have to prep for streams. So it's not like I have extra time. It, it means I'd have to let go of uploaded videos. So how many pages is my, my uh, block here? Um, it also has, it's a front, a back, and a sleeve here. I'd say it's, it's not very many pages, 10 or 11 or 12. There's no page numbers. Oh, there's 12. Actually, there is, it's, they're very faint back there. So yeah, 12 pages. Yeah, yeah, I got that book. Ooh. Right here. Yeah. You just muzzle, oh, and how did it go? That's awesome. Whoa, oh my gosh. There's a new update on my computer and now the, um, there's something at the bottom of my taskbar. Yeah, I talked about it in, at the end of one of my Friday sews, but this is pretty cool. Very great. If you're a beginner, I, I highly recommend anything Sonia, Sonia Phillip does. Um, as far as sewing and pattern drafting and fitting, she's just really simple about it. She's not going to come at you from like my standpoint where I was trained in a, at a college at a fashion design school and I worked in the garment industry. It's probably going to make more sense coming from her. And that's why I really like her stuff and her patterns. They're very basic and simple and they're such a great launching off point. Cause if you start getting good at making her things, you can use them as your basic blocks and kind of build on them. And this is what this book does. It, she teaches you how to do pattern drafting elements on all of her patterns. And then you get patterns at the back. And she was, so she sent me this book. She wrote a nice little thing in my book plate. <laughs> um, and, and she sent me a ton of fabric from her stash, which is all really fun and so Sonia Phillip um, to make things. And she's just kind of like, have fun with it. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Bye, Adina. Have fun. <laughs> oh, cool, Melinda. That's great. All right, anyway, I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna eat some lunch. I don't know if my new microphone will be able to pick up my tummy growling, and I don't want you to hear that, so. <laughs> and the sun just came out, so the rain's done. <laughs> All right, so I'll see you guys Saturday at 11. We can think about what we wanna do. We'll see how the sewing goes. Maybe this is a part two next Wednesday. I'm being chill. I'm 50 now, so I'm in the I don't give a crap phase, right? That's what I'm supposed to be in, right? No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I do. I give, I give a lot of crap. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Um, thank you for the donations, Corey and Ray. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you guys on Saturday. Thanks for coming. It was really nice to see you. I missed you all. Um, I'll show my fa fabric haul and my Friday sews tomorrow too. So, all right, you guys. Where's my little thing? There it is. All right, bye.